Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, kou Kaspins Takawingua. Thank you for those um, very kind words, uh, Christine. We're going to start the session uh, this morning with um, cough free the way to be. Uh, so looking at um, when to worry or be concerned that a child might be developing more of a chronic disease, uh, what is bronchiectasis and why is it such a problem uh, in Aotearoa? So the pathology of bronchiectasis is that infection and inflammation and mucus secretion essentially distorts the airway and that this airway distortion is very important because it means that the, thereafter, pockets of mucus uh, can collect in these distorted and um, dilated airways. And it means any next virus or bacteria that's kind of, in any new cough or cold, immediately has a medium to propagate um, and become an infection very, very quickly. And of course, these, air, these pockets are very difficult to clear, especially in children. And so then what develops is a chronic infection, chronic inflammation, chronic infection, chronic mucus. Oops. So what the thinking is, is that children might have a severe low respiratory tract infection, or they might just have several more mild or moderate infections in the community, and a proportion of them will go on to, have, to develop chronic symptoms, and a proportion of them will go on to develop bronchiectasis. And the problem for us is that we have very high rates of pneumonia and bronchiolitis, which are preceding conditions often <clears throat> to bronchiectasis. Although our pneumonia rates went down when we introduced the, uh, the pneumococcal vaccine in 2008, they have now sort of um, stabilised. Uh, and bronchiolitis over the last decade has gone up by about um, 50%. Uh, of course, we've had two weird years, 2020, where we had an 80% reduction of admissions to hospital with respiratory infection in counties Manukau. And then this year, where we've had such an explosion, the playroom had to be turned into a ward. Um, so who knows what will happen after this year with the severe disease that we've had. So when to worry? So a child that has a history of a wet cough, we usually say over four weeks, but often by the time they're presenting to you, it's been far longer than that, or a recurrent wet cough. And you have to remember that children can't expectorate sputum. So it's not productive like you would say in an adult. It it's just sounds rattly, it sounds mucousy. Recurrent low respiratory tract infections or seeming to require frequent use of antibiotics or a child that stands out from their siblings, which is often what the family will describe. Of note, any previous hospitalisation really ramps up the risk for developing chronic lung disease. The families often describe the cough as a smoker's cough or an old person's cough. And when you're looking at the child, again, assess their cough. So you can ask the child to cough, or what will usually stimulate it if you get the child to run around the room or run, run the corridor. And crackles on auscultation. The other signs are very late, and so don't wait for them. And then also the risks are greater in certain um, parts of the population. So Māori and Pacifica, Tamariki, uh, those from poorer socioeconomic areas, and those who've had delayed immunisations. A pathway you'll see less, but we would see more often, is a child that doesn't um, have resolution after a pneumonia. So you can see that this child uh, do I have a pointer? Don't worry. Um, has got an oxygen mask on on the um, on your left hand side um, with an obvious pneumonia in that left lower lobe. And then six weeks later, while that has somewhat cleared, you can still see there's changes in that left lower lobe. Now, should you be looking at a child that has had a wet cough and you've seen them a few times and you've given them antibiotics, etc., and you're worried about them, and you end up getting a chest X-ray? Do not be put off if the child still shows that pattern of symptoms, but the X-ray is normal. The X-rays do tend to be insensitive um, for showing chronic lung disease. And then what to do? So I know that at currently the big wave is do not give antibiotics for viral infections, but a child who has 
a chronic wet cough or repeated wet cough, um, in this case we would give a long course of antibiotics, usually amoxicillin or kefachlor. A respiratory sample if possible, but it's likely uh, to be difficult. And then stop any other um, irritants. So uh, get the family to keep the house and the car smoke free. Uh, good nutrition, check their immunizations are up to date. See if there's anything that uh, can be done about their environment with the healthy housing initiatives. Uh, and encourage exercise. So often the, the child is seen as unwell and exercise is limited or activity is limited. But actually running around or doing exercise is good because the child takes deep breaths and those deep breaths mean that, that it's more easy to expel that mucus. I did have chest physiotherapy, but I figured that would pr probably be pretty tricky to organise um, from uh, your clinics. And then don't hesitate to refer to paediatrics. So the diagnosis remains a chest CT scan. Uh, and that's an issue because it, it sets a high bar in people's minds because of the concern about radiation. But the radiation from a chest CT has definitely decreased. So it's now the equivalent of about four to six chest X-rays or a trip to the States that we're not doing anymore, but we did before. Um, and best in the public system uh, because we, there's very strict algorithms for children um, and often the very young ones will need a general anaesthetic um, to make the most of the CT. Uh, and uh, we do occasionally see children that have had a CT scan in private and it, there is, it's often an increased radiation, so definitely into the public system. The etiology of, um, of this problem, 50% are unknown and about 25% are post-infectious. But probably most of the unknown is also post-infectious. So we often do quite a few investigations, but 75% we come down to, it's after an infection. And then there is some lesser um, categories uh, also there. And in children, the commonest chronic infection is Haemophilus influenzae. Uh, and in adults, you can some, you, you sometimes uh, the more severe switch to having chronic pseudomonas infection, but that's very rare in children. And so therefore amoxicillin or kefachlor is, um, is a good starting antibiotic. So when um, we uh, have uh, diagnosed a child with bronchiectasis, and this is what we look at to try and improve their um, their. Uh, does their lung disease. So starting with their environment, can we improve their housing um, and uh, reduce exposure to cigarette smoke, provide good uh, education and good access to care, access to care appropriate for that, uh, for that whanau. And then routine care, which is usually daily chest physiotherapy, exercise, prompt recognition of symptoms, good nutrition, and then treatment of exacerbations or infective exacerbations with two weeks of antibiotics. Um, occasionally a child will need hospitalisation. And then azithromycin, very, very tiny down the bottom there. For those who are coming in and out of hospital, we do a prolonged treatment with azithromycin. So why a problem in Aotearoa? So this is a, a report done by the Asthma and Respiratory Foundation. And you can see that over uh, two decades that there has been an increase in bronchiectasis, um, nearly 50% uh, increase in hospitalisation and uh, mortality increased by over 80%. This is children and adults. Essentially, the prevalence is, um, is predicated on hospitalisation data, so it's likely an underread. And it would still give, gives us between 10 and 12,000 people with bronchiectasis in New Zealand. And you can see the shockingly high rates for Pacifica and for Māori um, as well here. So for example, uh, last year we had, no, sorry, in 2017, we had 136 new diagnoses um, in children um, up here. So in children, uh, we have about seven to 18 times the national uh, incidence than um, other studies done overseas. 
And also, if you look, we've done a comparison between Māori and Pacifica, Australian Aboriginal communities and Alaska First Nations children. And these are two different cohorts, um, an older cohort and a more recent cohort. And you can see that there is extensive disease at the time of diagnosis, but especially in this, in our New Zealand group. And also, this is uh, from Auckland. So these are different cohorts of children looking at their diagnosis. And you can see that year by year, the diagnosis has, um, has the age of diagnosis has lowered, but the disease remains severe. So we're still not getting under that curve yet. Now, the very important thing about diagnosing early these very young children is that unlike adults, bronchiectasis is reversible in children. Uh, can actually reverse to disappear, but it certainly can reverse to improve because of the, the chance of lung growth in your, early, um, ad, in your early childhood through to teenage years. So that's why it's so important. It's also a disease that reflects the environment. So these are the percentage um, of children in the bronchiectasis clinic um, that have uh, in this sense, in this parameter, overcrowding, the indigenous population, who their percentage of overcrowding, and the national paediatric population, and you can see that the children with bron who develop bronchiectasis definitely have uh, uh, more disadvantaged conditions, and it's the same uh, similar numbers with all of these other parameters. And there is an opportunity to intervene earlier. So um, the first, up, up the top here, there was five years of wet cough before diagnosis. Uh, there was uh, two years following chronic symptoms, four years following hospitalisation. This is from Adrian um, uh, Trenholm um, and myself. Three quarters of children still sh showed respiratory morbidity one and two years after pneumonia. And a mean of five chest x-rays done before CT scan, but some children had up to 35. And you'd really want to go straight to that CT and get started on treatment. So cough free the way to be and be wise immunise, two of the take home messages. When to worry, a wet sounding cough on history or exam, especially if it's been going on for some weeks. Recurrent respiratory infections and remember those high risk groups. There's a BPAC article in May 2020 that deals with this, and also a good fellow podcast that uh, I did with Louise Kegler and Grace Lee. Uh, there's also community health pathways. You're getting the copy of these. These links work on mine. I don't know if they'll work on your copies, but you'll all have access to the health, health pathways. Starship clinical guidelines. And then generally, um, Kids Health website is a site that gives you reliable and uh, readable information for families um, on loads and loads of topics, not just cough or bronchiectasis or pneumonia or bronchiolitis, but they're all there as well, but loads of things. So, um, Namahi Nui, thank you very much. <laughs>